Hello and welcome to my channel. This is my drawing of an Oryx antelope, a magnificent animal. And I've already done a drawing of it. It was black and white on toned paper. This one is going to be in colored pencil on sanded paper. I'm going to take you through the drawing process. Um, the colored pencils, as usual, are Faber Castell Polychromos colored pencils, and the sandpaper is a 1000 grit waterproof sandpaper. Uh, I'm doing the sketch and just making some adjustments to the composition because I the the horns were a little bit close to the edge of the paper. I had to shorten one of them a little bit. Um, I'm going to put the link in the description and in the end screen so that you can check out the first one. That, that was a full body drawing of this animal. And like I said, that was uh, black and white on toned paper. I wanted this one in full color with some nice background and uh, I wanted to focus a little bit more on the on the head so it's a slightly different drawing more like a portrait of an animal um, the, the background is going to be mostly green mostly simple green with just a few variations in color and value but it's an out of focus blurry background with no with no specific or discernible shapes in it. So most of the most of the effort is going to go into the the drawing of the main subject itself, the, the, the animal itself. The color I picked here is kind of like a yellowish, a light yellowish green. And that's going to be my base color. I'm going to use some other colors on top of that. Um, but first I'm filling in this top part of the background. And the other color is going to be this light earth green, which is a very dull, cooler green, and a very light color too. So I'm going to combine these two before I start doing any blending. Uh, I just uh, want to put those two on on the paper and uh, I added a touch of yellow here and there so after that I started blending and I'm doing I'm gonna be doing most of the blending with brushes these are just flat bristle brushes and the reason why I prefer flat brushes uh, is because they allow me to work around the edges a bit more easily I don't really have to be super accurate when I go around the edges but I I like to keep them as clean as possible I can always go back and clean them up by going over them with pencils or using erasers but if I don't have to put too much of the material over the edge uh, I always try to do that I always try to keep it clean so first I'm doing much of the background here at least on top and on the left side and the reason why uh, I'm doing that is not only to minimize smudging, but also to be able to gauge a bit more easily what the, the tones on the main subject are supposed to look like. Because I will be using that background to create some contrast with some parts of the, of the animal. Uh, it's mostly going to be darker than the background the ears, the, uh, the horns, they are going to stand out, stand out against the background because they are darker than the background. So I'm starting with the ear on the left. This area in the middle is a little bit darker. So I'm going to do that first with a black colored pencil and notice how the edges uh, I try to make those to, to look like there is a little bit of lighter hair going over those darker areas I can always refine that a bit with lighter pencils but I'm going to do that later so the animal mostly has a combination of um, 
dark, almost black fur and a very light fur. In some parts of the body it's very light, almost white. In others it's kind of like a light brown and almost beige. Now here on the ear, this lighter hair is almost white, but because it's in the shadow I'm going to use this grey. And I'm just going to add a touch of white here and there for some of the lighter hairs, for some of the lighter bits. And one of the advantages of this surface, of this medium, is the fact that I can draw these fine, small, lighter hairs over the dark areas. Basically, this surface allows me to draw, or to, to work from dark to light, which is uncommon with colored pencils, especially when you're working on regular papers, but on a textured surface like this one, like sanded papers, you can, you can do such things. You can put down multiple layers and you can put lighter details on top of the darker areas. I'm going to draw some parts or some patches of lighter fur here on the top of the head. Now I'm going to be using a combination of a white colored pencil and some light gray pencil. And then I'm going to move on to the horns. Now these horns, they have a texture of their own and they have a shape uh, that kind of consists like, uh, it, it looks like they consist of uh, many parallel uh, rings. So I'm going to draw a lot of these horizontal lines going across the shape of the horn and then I'm going to go around the edges drawing a round shape that kind of looks like a, a bunch of rings stacked together and getting narrower and narrower so that the horn uh, tapers uh, to the, near, the, near the top most of it is pretty dark, it's almost black, but with just a few lighter tones here and there. There's a little bit of shadow in between those horizontal shapes. And the part in between them because it's kind of uh, rounded and sticking out is going to be a little bit lighter and for those lighter bits I'm going to add a slightly lighter color and a slightly warmer color which is a cinnamon color colored pencil and then I'm going to clean up the edges around the horn because I want the I want the horns to stand out to to stand out against the background with a clean edge and of course a contrast in value because they're considerably darker than the background. There's a darker patch of fur her, of her here at the top, uh, at the top of the head. And now I'm just doing a little bit more of the background here on the right, going around the ears, going around uh, the horns. I'm going to do a little bit of the other eye here and first I'm going to put in the sketch light in the eye and there's also a little bit of reflected light or I don't know what it is here around the edge of that eyeball but the middle area is going to be pretty dark So I have a nice contrast between the the catchlight and the rest of the eye. 
Now I'm going to do the rest of the head here. There are some interesting, interesting colors, interesting contrast between those uh, areas of lighter, lighter fur and darker fur. And this pattern of colors is just uh, one of those things that adds to the appearance of the animal. Uh, which, like I said, is already a magnificent looking animal. Long horns, very muscular. Um, now here, I started with some darker colors here, but uh, here the fur kind of gets a little bit brownish and even reddish. I'm going to do the rest of the background here and then I'm going to go back to drawing the fur on the head. And of course uh, I need to finish the horn, the other horn as well. So I'm going to blend this with a brush like I did with the rest of the background. Um, the edges don't have to be perfectly clean but like I said I try to keep them fairly clean while I work and now I'm just going to go over that with a black colored pencil as I'm trying to finish the other horn. Again I'm drawing these horizontal shapes that taper near the end. Going around the edges a little bit with a green colored pencil to make sure that the edges are fairly clean and then shading these individual shapes adding a little bit of shadow under them and in between them so that the whole, whole horn uh, can appear a little bit more three-dimensional and then just adding some touches of lighter colors adding a few touches of lighter colors uh, to make the, the whole uh, shape of the horn appear more round if that makes sense I'm working on the other ear. Again, we have a combination of those lighter and darker colors, but here the lighter bits are going to be a bit lighter than the ones on the left side because this side of the animal is closer to the light source. This is the light side. And here I'm going to use a little bit more of the white colored pencil than I did on the on the left side. On the left I use a little bit more of the grey, a light grey but it's still darker than the plain white. I'm still going to use a combination of uh, greyish and white tones but here I'm just going to use a little bit more of the white. And of course this darker bit is in the middle with some lighter, uh, lighter hairs growing over it. Um, I always try to draw these uh, lines so that they imitate the appearance of the fur. One of the things that I often repeat when I draw wildlife is that uh, you have to, when you're drawing fur, when you're drawing hair, you have to make sure that the length of your strokes and the direction of your strokes matches the length and the direction of the fur. Here. For the most part, we have very, very short fur, with just a few bits of longer fur around the middle of the ears, and maybe a little bit here on the top of the neck and the top of the back area, which is like a mane, like a short mane. Now here on the nose, uh, around the nostrils, there is an area of darker fur and then there is a darker patch here in the middle of the head. Now I'm going to do most of the work initially with a black color pencil as you will see and then later and I've already started that a little bit on the on the right side which is the light side I'm going to be adding some brownish and even some reddish tones over that black. You can see I'm, I'm adding some touches of brownish and this is a caput morton which is kind of like a dull brownish maybe reddish brown a very dull color but um, the thing is that 
I don't know whether uh, this dark fur here is really it really has a reddish component to it or maybe it's, it's because of the overall lighting I'm not really sure but be that as it may I added some touches of those warmer colors and those lighter colors in the in the lighter side of the animal's head the snout area is also a little bit lighter but again I started with some grays in on the left side and in the, in the middle and then on top of that I added some white I try to use uh, the white colored pencil mostly in those parts of the of the animal's head which are facing to the right facing the light source but here and there I can add a touch of those lighter values or, or those lighter marks even in the shadow side if I want to modify either the texture or the colors a little bit So moving on with the background here, now finishing this bottom part, this lower part of the background. As you can see the background is very simple, but I do like the color and uh, I think it provides a nice contrast with the main subject. Here at the bottom I'm going to add some touches of uh, burnt ochre. And I want to have a kind of like a gradient or a transition uh, with with those uh, yellowish and brownish tones at the bottom and then getting lighter and cooler at the top because I want to make it look like there are just some blurry suggestions of grass in the background maybe some trees or bushes in the middle and then at the top we're going to be getting some lighter colors almost bluish like the sky but it's all very blurry and out of focus so these are just some suggestions I'm hoping that with just a few suggestions of colors I can give I can give the viewer some idea about the environment the the animal is in Uh, this lower part of the neck and the chest area is going to be dark not just because of the fur but because it's also in the shadow so I'm using a lot of black color pencil there the chest area is covered with an area of lighter fur but I'm going to get to that later now this neck area will be interesting because we're going to be moving on to some more brownish tones First I used a bit of burnt sienna which is like a reddish brown and then some walnut brown in between that and at the bottom in the shadow area and then for the base color I used the cinnamon colored pencil and uh, a little bit of white and gray at the bottom but mostly cinnamon here for this shoulder, chest and uh, neck area and then I'm just going to blend that with a brush and I'm getting kind of a very dull color with some uh, with some reddish and brownish tones in there now here uh, I need to add a little bit more of this mane and a little bit of shadow and also I need to add some folds in the fur and the skin here where the neck is twisting because the animal is turning its head toward us and there's going to be some folds here on the neck first I'm just going to put down these marks with a black colored pencil because I can always go over those uh, those marks with a black colored pencil I can always go over them uh, with some other color pencils and modify the color a little bit but first I establish that darker tone, that darker color and some shadow areas at the bottom and some indications of muscles and things like that and now I'm just going over that 
with a little bit of burnt sienna and getting a warmer and more reddish dark color and it works on this surface it works on regular paper I don't really know if I would recommend that but here on this surface I find it a lot easier to create areas of really dark value simply by using the black color pencil first and then adding the color that I like on top of that in in most situations uh, you wouldn't really do that but on this surface you can get away with it and I think it looks pretty good so now I'm adding a bit more texture to this neck area trying to imitate the appearance of the fur and my marks my strokes are really short here as you can see because I'm trying to uh, imitate the appearance of short fur now the fur here is a little bit longer than on the head but it's still fairly short it's a fairly short haired animal uh, the color I'm using now is a light beige uh, light beige red or something like that and it's even lighter than cinnamon and you can see now how these lighter marks are starting to appear against that slightly darker background and I'm getting a really nice texture that looks like short fur I decided to slow down a little bit and uh, zoom in so that you can see this and I think that uh, one of the most important things that you can learn here is how easy it is to put these lighter marks on top of areas of lighter or of darker value when you're working on sanded paper I can just put these very light marks uh, on top of those shadow areas and create a very nice and realistic looking texture with very little effort. To achieve a similar effect on regular paper um, I would have to use a completely different approach and I would have to work from light to dark which wouldn't work quite as well for some of these uh, lighter marks for some of these lighter hairs which are supposed to be which are supposed to look like they're sitting on top of darker hairs and uh, sticking out and catching more light from above. Now as one of the finishing touches I'm going to add a little bit of this light ultramarine uh, which is like a light bluish color to some parts of the animal especially in the shadow area and after that just a little bit of cleaning up around the horns around the edges and the drawing is almost done to wrap things up I'm just going to put my signature in the lower left corner now if you like my videos don't forget to subscribe give me a like and comment and for much more content and much longer videos real-time footage and more narration you should check out my Patreon. I hope you liked this little drawing of an oryx. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out my other videos. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.